here with all of you. I'm actually sitting in the Cedarburg outside, so that's why my glasses have got a bit dark, so I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, it's really, really great to be here with you all and um, a massive warm welcome to my partner, Dawn. Thank you so much, Dawn, for joining us. So this morning, we're going to take you through the red level, which is really about finding your true north. And somebody said to me the other day, you know, Les, given the current situation, this is really about sort of your new north. But I think I tend to disagree with that. I think your true north is still your true north. It's really what is inside you. It's what makes you tick. It's what you're good at. It's what's going to make you money and it's doing what you love. So today we really want to go through a process to help you sort of find a vision for your business and really set you on that path of finding your true north. What is it that you really want in your life? What are you going to be committed to? And what is so important to you that nothing is going to stop you and nothing is going to get in your way. And um, we're going to take you in each of our sessions, we take you to sort of seven steps that help you get there. Now, this is a very, this is not a webinar, guys, this is a training program, and we really want you to be involved. Please, if you um, what, have a question, put it in the chats you know, talk to us, we, we, we want to engage with you. This is not a one-way conversation. You know, you all have separate businesses, you all have separate lives, and we want to try and engage with you as much as we possibly can and help you as much as we possibly can in the hour that we have together. We really don't want this to be just about us talking. We want this to be about all of us engaging. Um, if I can just get a an, sort of a show of hands or a one word or whatever it is in, in the chat, who of you all run your own businesses? Who are already entrepreneurs? And then who of you are wanting to start a business? Just so that we can get a sense of who's already got a business and who um, is wanting to start a business. If you can just type it in the chat, so I think that's probably going to be the easiest. Got a bit of, yes, Daniel, I know you have. And welcome back. It's lovely. Process of starting. You are a business owner. Fantastic. Want to start? Okay, great. Just launched. Fantastic. Started, not active. Okay. So we've got some real great startups here. Fantastic, Erin. You're already running your own business. Okay. Brilliant. Badly affected by the yeah, I know. I'm so sorry about that, guys. It has been a really, really tough time. Well, we're gonna hope to put you on the path to success. Okay, so um, I think, you, thank you, Gwen, that's great. And then if we can also just get one last sense, because I really do want to try and um, understand everybody and where you're at. Who employs people or who um, is just a one man uh, who's just kind of got a business that it's just them? Okay. People with them. Okay, we have a team, Neil. Okay, okay, 150 people. That's awesome. Temporary, great. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so some of you, most of you, are one person. I just wanted to share with you a beautiful statistic that um, I once heard, and I and it's. If every small business globally employed one more person, it would alleviate unemployment worldwide. So, you know, I think sometimes we create a job for ourselves, but other times what we really, what we want to get you to do is really start a business with value. And I think that's what being an entrepreneur is to try and grow that business so that all that investment and hard work and you know, blood, sweat and tears that you put into it, one day, you know, you can either sell it or you can exit your business and you've created something of value. And um, that's what we really want to take you through in these next six weeks is to build a business with value, employ that one more person so that we can also obviously help unemployment and that you can start thinking about how do I scale this business and how do I create a business with value. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Dawn, who's going to take you to, through um, the first phase. I'm going to share my screen now, just so that we can take you through um, the colors of the rainbow and 
to find your true north and live the life you were meant to. Over to you, Dawn. Thanks, Les, um, and welcome to everybody. And thank you, Lisa, for organizing um, today. And um, thanks, Les, for inviting me because this is um, certainly Les's passion. Um, I've been part of the business for the last three years, and it's really just amazing to see um, the number of people out there who have left the corporate world and started up their own business. And um, it's incredible to see the number of one-man bands there are out there. And I think, you know, if we really, let's be honest with ourselves today, we need to face the elephant in the room. And what is the elephant in the room for entrepreneurs? It's, it's really the situation we find ourselves in today. So I'm hoping that um, over the next six weeks, we're going to give you some tools to be able to navigate through this time of, of, of crisis, through this unprecedented time. And I think more so than ever before, as an entrepreneur, um, purpose and, and values are so extremely important. And I want to take you through, Les, if you'll just quickly go through the next si slide for me. Um, I want to take you through this. We, we're going to take you through the seven steps of finding your true north, as Les said. Um, this first part, the first module is finding your, um, your true north, finding your purpose, finding who you are, finding your what are your values, um, and, you know, what are your missions? Because for entrepreneurs, and I speak for myself and for thousands of entrepreneurs that, I, that I've met over the years, um, one thing about an entrepreneur, we are so enthusiastic and we're so passionate about what we do, we're a little bit all over the place. And I think the important thing when it comes to vision, when it comes to purpose, when it comes to your values, is that you get clarity. So this is the first thing that I want to talk to you about, is, is clarity around your purpose. Because as entrepreneurs, we jump from one thing to the next, from one idea to the next. And I think it's really important for us to have focus and to define what business we're in and to define what the purpose of your business is and to stick to it and get clarity and communicate. For those of you, I saw somebody there with 100 staff members, it's really important that you communicate your purpose your values, your mission to everybody in your organization. So it's very, very clear. There can be no misunderstanding in terms of what your clarity is. And I always use the example, there are a couple of companies that I love and I follow, like Apple and, and Nike. And Nike in particular is one company, and I actually checked their share price. And even over COVID, they've managed to retain um, their share value and um, they, they've actually kept their, their business very stable, unlike many other businesses. And I think for, for me, Nike is, 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 is really a great example in terms of clarity. So they started their business, I think, in 1967 or in, in the 60s, um, and they started making um, shoes for athletes. And then the owner, like in, in the early 70s, decided that there were so many people playing in that same market that they needed to differentiate themselves. And they, had, they didn't really, they weren't making a lot of money. They weren't listed. They were quite a small business. And the, I don't know if any of you have read the book, but it's actually an amazing story. He employed, employed a freelance designer to design a new position, a new vision for, for Nike. Um, he paid her 35 US dollars um, to actually create, which is still today, like 60 years later or, or 40 years later, um, the swoosh, as we know, the Nike tick. And their, their vision and their, um, their, their values, their core values, internally and externally, and I'll read it to you, is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. I'll say it again, to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. And what does that tell you? So, it, so they want to inspire the um, wannabe athletes, the people like myself who, um, who think they can, they can run, but I can't run to save my life. 
but they want to inspire the average person. So, so they're opening this up to, to everybody. They're not separating it and saying only if you are a super soccer player or if you're a super athlete, they're opening it up to everybody. And then the innovation part. Um, so that puts pressure internally on their own people to come up with innovative ways um, of transforming the sneaker. And um, then obviously every, every athlete in the world. So for me, Nike um, is, is, is really such a good example. And I think sometimes we get a little confused in terms of what is clarity of your vision and your values and your mission versus what is your, um, your payoff line. So their payoff line is just do it with the swish. And everybody knows that, but that's not necessary. Just do it is not necessary what their values reflect. Their values reflect inspiration and innovation. And I think it's really important that if you can today, I don't know if any of you have got your um, the notes. Les, I don't know if you sent through setting your, your intentions. I don't know, Lisa, did everybody get this um, the notes? I think if you can, and I, we've got limited time today, but set your own intentions. Um, and what is it that you, you want to achieve? Because no matter where you are in life, um, you know, unless you're always thriving for something more, you know, you're going to get the same result and, and, and you're really going to stagnate. So I think it's important that, you know, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? What is your purpose? Um, so, so maybe if you can, Les, and I know you more fair with, with that, but, but just go through that and, um, you know, really start making a journal for yourself um, of, of where you want to be. What is your purpose? And keep going back to that because it's really important to go back to that and say, how far am I? And, and as I said to you, as entrepreneurs, sometimes we lose focus. So it's about doing what you love, um, but also, you know, with a purpose um, and, and finding something that differentiates you and share it and communicate with everybody. Les, I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, I think just, you know, people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. And I think if you can just think about that statement, you know, you've got to be very clear on exactly what you want um, in your life. And those then, and you put, you put focus on that. You know, at the beginning of lockdown, and April was a chaotic time for all of us, but um, come the end of April, Dawn, myself and Sandy decided to, to write a book. And we were absolutely clear that we wanted to, to leave a legacy. This was such a crazy time that we totally focused on, we need to write this book, we want to do this, and nothing was going to get in our way. And I think sometimes with, with running a business, you really got to be clear about what you want. I mean, Dawn built a billion rand you know, business um, in Eurocar, you know, in the beginning of my time in my agency life, you know, I also wanted to build a big business, make a difference, change lives. And I've sort of managed to do that, um, not quite to the extent that Dawn has, but certainly, you know, in my own little way. But I think it is really about clarity. And I think what happens with us entrepreneurs is sometimes, and, I, and I've made these mistakes as well in my life, we have what we call a shiny penny syndrome, where, you know, oh, that looks interesting and that looks exciting and we run over there. And then it's, oh, wow, you know, that also looks exciting. And, and, and I've made those mistakes. And you know, having realized that, you know, we, we made those, you know, ran over there, ran over there, it didn't give us the clarity and the focus that one needs to have, especially when you're starting out. And I love the, the analogy of you can't catch two rabbits because you literally can't catch two rabbits. And I think the problem with um, entrepreneurs sometimes is they try and do too much. And it's a little bit of that and it's running over there and a little bit of that. But if you really are focused and clear about what you want in your life, it will show up. And I think that that's what the point that we wanted to make in this is you need to have clarity, you need to have focus, you need to know what you want, and then you need to absolutely do everything in your power to get there. Okay, are there any questions? I think we can run a short Q&A session after each color, just to sort of, you know, make sure that we're landing our point and to make sure that you guys are clear on what, um, if there are any questions that you want to ask at this point, please just put it in the chat or unmute yourselves. We're very happy to, 
to you know have your opinions at this point as well. As I said, it is a training course. It's not a one-way conversation. Les, can I just add a funny story? And it's just on your purpose and um, your values. So about two years ago, Les and I were running a youth program for the youth because we be feel very passionately about um, the youth of the future. And we were looking for sponsors to run the program. And we had a lady who was working with us who was, was going out looking for sponsorship. And the one day she phoned us and she said, I'm so excited, Les and Dawn, I've got this most amazing sponsor. And we're like, oh my goodness. And they prepared to pour money into this youth program. We said, that is amazing. Who is the sponsor? In fact, I'm gonna change the word um, because I, I, people might know the, the, the company, but it was an adult um, sex shop. <laughs> and um, they prepared to come into this youth program and Les and I looked at each other and, and I think it's an important message that, you know, sometimes we, we think of money over purpose and success is not always about making the money, but, but adding the value and what you decide to do must resonate with your values. Your values like last forever. You don't ever change your values. And people might come into your organization with a different set of values and you've got to meet them halfway. But for us to go into a youth program with an adult sex sponsor um, just did not resonate with us at all. So I think it's very important that you, you, you live your life through, through your values. Absolutely. That is, Les, yeah. and, and there is yeah. a question there is a question in the chat oh. box um, okay. if, you, if you want to yeah, address so it so now. Yes, please, we would like to. Thank you. Please, Lise, you're going to have to run that for us because it actually doesn't come up on my screen, if you don't mind. Okay, so there's a question around um, distinguishing between outcomes and, out, sorry, outcomes and outputs. She doesn't mean to be academic, but if you know your outcome, then your outputs are the products and the services you provide to achieve this. In this way, you can be more flexible and resilient and stay more focused on the outcome. I suppose it's more of a comment than a question. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think I do agree with that. Okay, I totally, so let's... I totally agree with that because, um, yeah, I, th I think um, your output and your input um, really, again, need to be aligned. And I think it's very important. And... I just want to make a point is as we go through the six weeks and I won't be in on all of the sessions, but as we go through the six weeks, we actually cover that. Um, we cover that, I think, in third or fourth module, Les, if I'm... If yes, I'm more in, in, the, in the sales module, absolutely, about your outcomes and, and you know, uh, about your messaging and that kind of thing. We absolutely do cover that later on. So thank you for that. Okay. So let's move on to intention. So I think once you have clarity of what you're looking for or what you want in your life, and that is your intention, and then you focus on that, the things that are important to you will show up. So this is really about creating that, that purpose. And once again, in, in the sales section, we, come, we, we, know, we really find your why and you know, what is it that, because people buy your why, not really what you do, but why you do it. And, um, you know, you really have to have a intention of what you want to create. Um, so what I want to get out of, and I wonder what I want to get, a, or you guys to get out of this program um, today is setting that vision for yourselves, finding that sort of that true north. Now in CWDI, the agency I run, the vision that we have is a global agency inspiring connections. So every time there is an opportunity that I travel overseas or I um, have an opportunity to engage with an international client, I then do that because that is part of our vision. Now, your vision is something that's almost, you know, bigger than, bigger than what you're currently doing. It's a, it's a dream. For example, the Alzheimer's Association is a world without Alzheimer's. I mean, obviously, in a way, that's never really going to happen, but that is their their purpose that is their focus that's what they want and i mean you look at the big companies in the, um 
uh, in the world. And I think if you've downloaded our book, um, to, for, for example, Spa, one of our own local brands, to be the first choice brand in the community we serve. So I really want you guys to start thinking about what is your vision for your business? What is it that will set you on that path? What is that, that statement that you can put up on your wall that drives your true north? And what is that intention that you want to create? And sometimes it's sort of a 20, 25 year plan. You know, it's not something that you can achieve in the next two or three years. It's something that's long term. It's something that's big. It's almost like your BHAG, your big, hairy, audacious goal. What is that vision that you want to set for your business? And I really want you to think about that. I'm, and I'm really happy to try and help you. It's, it becomes a, a sort of a, a, a copywriting or a word crafting mission because every word in that vision is important and it must be something that's easy to say that's quick that everybody can understand that is just something that resonates with you in every part of your life that is my vision that's where i'm going and whenever you get sidetracked this is the thing that keeps you on track so please think about you know what is that vision that you want to um, achieve for yourself. There's so much um, in our book around visions. There, there's so much um, that you can Google around it as well. But you know, next time uh, when we meet, possibly you know, we can connect and just that we you can share your visions with us. Has anybody actually got a vision for their business, and are they happy with it? I think that's my question to you. If, if Lisa, if you can just. Um, tell us if people have got this vision, if they have set something for themselves in their businesses and are they happy with it? Is it something that's easy to remember? Is it something that is inspirational? Um, <clears throat> a couple of people have said yes, um, that they do have visions and they are clear. Um, one lady has said, not clearly crafted yet in the making. So being on this course, obviously, is a good, a good thing. Another lady says, no vision yet. Um, they seem to have, but not quite clear, um, changes all the time. So clearly, it's something um, we all need to work on. Okay. Not everyone, and but a lot of us. Okay, so the, the, you really have to, and just in order to help you try and craft that, that vision, is you really have to look for the future. Where do you want to be? Where do you see yourself in the next 10, 15 years? What is that long-term goal? Is it about the communities you serve? Is it about, um, and it's never really based on money or, or, or in, like, it, it really is about how you're going to help grow your business, how you're going to grow yourself, and how you're going to make this vision something that everybody can pull towards. It really is that aspirational, inspirational statement that when you speak to your team and everybody can, you know, get behind. It's uh, um, just one quick story in the, in the 60s when JFK um, wanted to, they, their BHAG, their vision for that um, generation was, we want to, by the end of this generation, we want to put a man on the moon. And everything they did, you know, during his uh, time as president, they were focused on putting a man on the moon. So it really is, um, they didn't have the technology, they didn't even know how they were going to do it. But he said, by the end of this, this um, um, decade, we won't want to put a man on the moon. And so it really is, what is that big hairy audacious goal that you want to achieve and then you'll see that things start showing up and um and you know when when you put your intention on that it starts becoming clearer in your life so it needs to be quite big and it needs to be something that is very aspirational that will drive um that will drive you towards that okay yes, sure. there's yes. one question um how do you set a vision when you are taking over someone else's business? Okay, so sure. Okay, I would need to unpack that um, separately. It, okay, so first of all, is it something you love? Is it something that you're good at? 
and can you make money from it? I think as long as you love what you do, people who love what they do are far more successful than people that don't. So you have to ask your question, yourself the question, is this something that you absolutely love and is this something that you are good at and can you make money from it? So you've got to then make it your own and how are you going to do that? And I think that, you know, those are the questions that you need to ask yourself. In, um, we, we also run a, a test called the passion test and, it, and it's about the things in your life that are important to you. And 66% of people are unhappy because they're not doing what they love. And I think the first thing for me in finding your purpose and finding your, your true north is doing what you love. And I think that that is the number one um, thing that I would like to say to each and every one of you. If, you know, if you're doing what you love, that is your first step towards success. Does that help answer your question? Les, can I just add on to that? Um, do you mind if I just quickly add on to that? Because no, I think it's all. a very good question. And I'm putting, Les, I'm putting you on the spot here, but um, I know it's very difficult to, to have an interactive conference or, or workshop shop session via Zoom. But I'm happy, Lisa, for Les and I to give our email addresses. And if people have questions, that require a little bit of unpacking, um, I'm really happy to guide people through the process because um, it's so important that we start off with this vision. And if you're not clear, I'm really happy to look at your vision and, and maybe discuss a couple of pointers with you via email. But the one thing that's important and that question about, can you take over somebody else's vision? And I think if you've got the buy-in of your staff, if, for those of you who've got staff, um, you can actually pick up somebody else's vision. And, and I'll tell you, when I started Imperial, we started as Imperial, and then obviously we changed and became global to Europe uh, and changed the name to Europe Car. But that was um, in 1980. I mean, it's, it's 40 years ago. <laughs> I was 10. But it was... <laughs> It was a long time ago, and when we started our business, we started with a disadvantage. There were these three global players. We were three enthusiastic, amateur women who knew nothing about business. I'd never read a balance sheet in my life. But we said, how can we differentiate ourselves? And we said, you know what? If we offer a really personal service and we make it the whole engagement as effortless as possible, so it was personal and effortless, in effortless interaction. Do you know that still today, and I mean, I left the business about three or four years ago, but I'm in touch with them all the time. And especially over this period of COVID, where everyone is in turmoil, I mean, they're running at 20% of their capacity. Um, they've had to retrench a lot of people. But the one thing, and, and there's been two people who succeeded me, and they have kept that personal element in touch with your people, in touch with your customers. They still st stay true to that. And it's like so heartwarming to hear that something that we started 40 years ago is still being lived today. And it's no different to the Nike story. In fact, the statistics I read, 87% of the Nike employees say what keeps them at Nike is the vision and the way the business is driven through the vision of innovation and inspiration. So, so just to add to that, Les, are you happy to give out your email address to actually help anyone with their vision? A hundred percent. I think it's actually important. You know, this is a six weeks course that we really want you to come out with a, with a proper plan. And um, at the end, we really, you know, you come out with a proper three year plan and it is totally our intention to help you at every step of the way. And I actually was going to suggest that Dawn as well, just to say you, we are available for, um, you know, out of time sessions just to help you get clarity. Because I think, you know, we, once we form the foundation, everything can then get built on top of that. And I think the foundation in terms of your vision, your passion, you know, where you want to take this business is so important. I actually ran a session um, last week for a company that I'm on a board for. And it was so powerful when they actually got to their 
vision statement and it was you know they really felt you know so much clearer and so much better about everything because your messaging becomes clearer how you take yourself to market is clearer so i definitely think it's something that we must offer and i and i'd be only too delighted to so lisa you can share both with dawn and my email addresses so anybody can reach out to us and we're willing to have one-on-ones um with the companies that we need it okay i'm just conscious of time dawn third, so i think we do need third to one quick i'll be very very quick um no, perfect. So, so number three in defining your purpose and your vision and your mission, um, I think you need to, um, Les, I think it's just the next one. Yeah, no, no, I'm getting there. Sorry. Um. So, yeah, so you have to have a positive attitude. So I'm going to talk um, a little bit about, about being positive. And it's such an overused word. So I've actually changed it. So what I'm going to talk about is not in the book, but it's the way I see positivity. So I like to think about positive, positive resistance. So resilience, sorry, not resist, resistance. So positive resilience. So what does that mean? So, so being positive is, is, is about surviving. Being positively resilient means thriving. So, um, and I think the two, like, are so that they, they, they work together for me so well. Because I think we can all be enthusiastic and positive Pollyannas. And I think we all know the Pollyander, Pollyander syndrome, that you're just happy and you're just enthusiastic. And, you know, as a leader, you know, there are times that, that you have to be real and share like things with your people that, that, that are maybe a little harsh. So, so I think for me, positive, um, resilience is about first about your your self esteem. You've got to have a pretty high self esteem, and um, it's not always easy. Particularly right now, it's 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 quite difficult. You've also to be positive. Um, I, I think you've got to be able to be flexible. So being positive is about looking at any difficult, challenging situation and finding hope, or finding a solution, or finding. Um, you know something that that can, can that can work. Um, so I, I think flexibility, high self esteem, um, have a non judgmental mindset because I think it's very important when you are writing your vision and your purpose that for those of you who have staff, include them in the process. I think that's really important because you then get their buy in. Um, so I think when you doing and going through that process, it's so easy as a leader to hear somebody come up with an idea and you say to them, oh, we've done that before, that, 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 that doesn't work, it's never going to work. So I think we've got to be non-judgmental. We've got to be open to, to different ideas. And I always say, you know, I always said to myself that when I reach a certain age, you've got to hand the, the baton over to somebody younger. And if you can't do that, if it's your own business, always try and have a balance of like the youth and the wisdom and the experience and knowledge. You need a whole mix of people in your, your, your organization. You can't have a lot of young people who haven't got the knowledge, but you can tap into people. You can find mentors that, that have, um, that have the knowledge. So um, it's, it's about um, your, your emotional balance. It's about your mindset and moving from a mindset because as an entrepreneur and particularly those startups, you start off your business with a fearful mindset and you've got to move that fearful mindset into a growth mindset. So for me about um, you know, being positive is, is really what you feed inside here. Um, and, and, and being totally resilient to, to anything that, that comes your way. Um, and I think it's about having an attitude of gratitude. Um, so whatever program, so last year I went on the Momentum Women's Program, and you start off by, by, by listing like 20 um, things that you're really grateful for, or, or 20 people that you're grateful for, for opening a door, for giving you an opportunity. So I think to be positive, you've got to have this mindset of, of, of gratitude. 
Um, and and I did all, I also did a Deepak. I know Les also did the Deepak meditation, but I did the Deepak 21 day program on abundancy. And Deepak starts off the 21 day meditation process with with making you list your what in life are you grateful for? And, you know, when you start thinking about it, and I think it's an exercise that you should all do, make a journal of what in life have you got to be grateful for? And when you start the list, it's surprising just how many people who've inspired you, how many things have happened. It could be a person, it could be um, your dog, it could be anything. So I think um, that to me is, is, is really important. So um, positivity into an openness and resilience when you are formulating, forming your vision and your purpose and your mission is, is, is absolutely critical. So I think it's about having this, um, this mindset um, of, 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 of change, open to change, open to listening to, to other people's opinion. Um, and, and, and really, I think for, for me, it's not really about just being this enthusiastic amateur. It's, it's really positivity is there's more depth to it than just being um, somebody who just says every morning they wake up and it's just everything is wonderful and everything is exciting because that's not the way the world is. So um, you, you've got to be resilient and you've got to um, be authentic. So Les, I'll leave you to, to the next one. If you want to add anything to that, Les. No, I mean, I think that you're absolutely right. I think it is an attitude of gratitude more than anything else. And I think it is moving from that, you know, sort of closed mindset to that um, growth mindset. And I think that that's what this is really all about. And I think that's what we mean by this is, you know, having that uh, a, a positive attitude towards life because, you know, you know be, be, you, positive people attract good things in their life. And, um, so, you know, nobody wants to be around negativity. So I think it is definitely a step towards, you know, moving towards that growth mindset that we speak about. But just, um, just before we get on to setting goals, what I also want to touch on is, and is in your, I think Lisa has emailed all of you the, um, the worksheet that we would normally do in person. Obviously, you must remember that this is the first time we've actually done this online. So it is quite challenging not to, you know, interact with all of you because, um, <laughs> you know, that's where the, the real beauty lies is when we all help each other. But, um, so just forgive us for, you know, this kind of one-sided conversation. But I think um, what I want to touch on, and it is in your worksheets, is once you've set your vision, it's also important to then set the, your values of your business, which then form the cornerstone of almost how you grow your business, how you hire, how you, you know, how you fire people. Uh, and what is the most important thing to you in your business? So in CWDI, I just want to give you a quick example here. So we are vision led, but we are driven by our values. And our values are the behaviors that we want to ensure that is constantly um, people are adhering to in the business. So what are those values? So A, that's creativity. Because we are an agency, it's very important for all of us to be creative. And no matter who you are, so creativity doesn't only mean, um, you know, being in an advertising agency. It also means coming up with new ideas, finding a better way, finding a, a great way of doing things. Courage is another one of our values. Um, we want people to be able to step up, to, to be able to be courageous, to be able to challenge um, management, to be able to challenge the, um, the team, to challenge themselves and to have the courage to do these things. Quality. So you've got to think of, and I know in your worksheets, you've got a whole list of words that we've, we've actually put in there. And I want you to have a look at that. So once you've set your vision, what are the behaviors that will drive you towards that vision. And I think that that's really, really important. So before we get onto the goal setting, I really want you to start thinking about vision led and values driven. And in, um, I don't like more than five values to be, or to be honest, I think three is too little. I think seven is probably too much in our business and in my experience. 
um, we have we've we've really settled on sort of five values that are the cornerstone of how we drive behavior in our business. So just moving on from there, is it, are there any questions on that? Lisa, um, if you can just read us any questions on that, on the vision and the values. And once again, we're very happy to help you with this. It's not an easy process. It does take time. And we're very, very happy to, to engage with you separately on this. No questions have come through yet. Um, okay. So I think, yeah, let's get on to the next one. If anything does come through, then we can okay, tackle perfect. them maybe at the end. I'm just concerned of time. No, 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 absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to talk um, on the next one, um, which is, um, sorry, Les, have you got the next? There you go. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, persistence. And um, I think, you know, for me, it's been like the most important part of, of, of my journey um, as, as, as an entrepreneur is pure and utter persistence, tenacity, just, you know, never, ever, ever, ever taking no for an answer. And um, despite all the challenges that you may face and all the rejection that you may get, just, just persisting and, and continuing. And there's, there's a lot of people who talk about um, persistence um, and um, perseverance. You know, what is the difference between persistence and perseverance? And I think it's put so beautifully by, um, by Steve Jobs from, from Apple that he says that I'm convinced um, that half of what separates success, successful entrepreneurs um, from the non-successful ones is pure perseverance. But it's interesting with, with Steve Jobs at Apple, he persevered to find the perfect tablet. He started off with the Mac, then he went into the tablet, then the iPhone, and he persevered in terms of his product to perfect his product. But him, himself, he was persistent. He was so persistent that even after he was fired as a CEO, he was absolutely persistent that he was going to go back and turn the business around. So I think the two, again, are very interchangeable. Um, and I think, you know, some people are more persistent than they, that they are perseverant. But, but it, I think success for me is not um, about the absence of failure, but it's about the persistence through your journey of failure. And we'll talk about failure and rejection a little bit later on, but I think it's, it's so important that we remember that um, hustle brings you money. I mean, the hustle brings you the money. Um, the experience brings you the knowledge to, to move on and, and, um, and grow your business. But it's the persistence and the perseverance that brings you the long-term sustainable success. And I think that's really my important message that, that I want to leave you. Um, and, and, it, and it really is about just continually kicking doors down, pounding pavements, and, and doing things that you probably never dreamed of doing. Um, so from my early days in my career, I was, I was absolutely hell-bent on making a success. I'd been given an opportunity at the age of 21 to start this car rental business um, with, with, with two other females. And it was really perseverance and persistence that, that drove us and sheer grit, determination, and loving what we did. And, and actually, the more, the more that people told us that we would never be able to make it, there were three global brands out there, the more persistent we became in actually being successful until we became the largest car rental company in, in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and in fact, the, the, one of the biggest achievements was that we were the biggest purchaser of Toyota products in the world outside of Japan. I mean, for me, that was, that was incredible. When I left, we had a fleet. We started with six cars. 
we had a fleet of 25,000 cars, and that comes with pure persistence. Um, so so I, I think it's a really important part of this journey that if you, if you look at those that have really made it, they persevere and are incredibly persistent. So thanks, Les. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. No, I mean, I think that you're absolutely right. And, you know, and it's not all about, you know, being persistent in the good times. It's also being persistent, you know, in the, in the bad times. And, you know, especially now that, um, you know, in this crazy time that we find ourselves in, I think being persistent and really, you know, going for what you want and is, uh, is so important. Okay, so let's just move on to, um, to sort of, this is more about putting your attention and focus. And I think this goes um, back to um, number four as well that we, we didn't spend too much time on. But what are you, so you've got your vision, you've got your values, and now what are you going to put your attention on? What are you going to focus on? And I do think this goes down to, you know, setting small goals for yourselves. And, you know, um, a vision is a very long-term driving force for your business, but your, your goals are the things that will, you know, your three months, your six months, your 12 months plans, but your goals must be, you know, I'm sure you've heard of, and if you've downloaded the book, it's in the book, it's, they must be smart goals. They must be, you know, they must be specific. So what are the, and I think when you break it down, into those three months, six months, and 12 months goals. It just makes it more digestible. You know, a vision is such a long-term thing, but when you break your goals, okay, what am I gonna do in the next three months? What are the five things that I'm going to try and achieve in the next three months? So make your goals very specific. Who, what, where, when, everything that you can think of to um, being as specific as possible. So when Dawn, Sandy, and I wrote our book, we were like, we were going to interview everybody in May. Then in June, we were going to edit. In July, we were going to send it to our, um, our publishers. And in August, we wanted to get published. So we were very specific about what we wanted. So we knew, um, you know, what we needed to do by when we, we needed to do it in order to achieve. Um, we wrote our first book in five years. We wrote our second book in five months, sort of from t the time of we started to the time of um, completion. So we really wanted to get it done quickly, but we needed to put a lot of attention on it in order to achieve that goal. They also need to be measurable so that you can have those little wins along the way. You know, what is, we wanted to do 27 stories um, in that time. So we knew exactly what we, what we needed to do and it was measurable. It needs to be attainable, obviously, so that you don't lose hope and you don't lose focus. So you need to be able to reach your goals. They need to be realistic. And then obviously there needs to be a time frame to it. And that's why I say in any business, you know, we always have a 30 day, a 60 day and a 90 day plan. And we, we track according to that. So once you put your attention on these smaller goals in your business, then you, you are more likely to reach your long term vision and, um, and be successful. Dawn. Thanks, Les. There was a question there. What is the name of, of, of our book? So the new book has been launched on the 18th of August, and that's called Hope Stories. And those are the incredible stories of hope that during lockdown we came across that inspired us of, of literally just your average ordinary person doing extraordinary things. So thank you, Lisa, for putting that up there. Um, but the other book is um, the book that, that you've been given, which is the Entrepreneur's Playbook. But just, just to end off, I, I, and, and Leslie will actually close, but I just want to talk about point number seven, um, which is no tension. And no tension, um, in, in my opinion, means just never giving up. Um, you know, just continuing to, to persevere and to, to, to try absolutely everything. So never giving up means that you've got to face failure. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs give up and 86% of startups fail in their, in their first and their second year um, because they give up. And I think if you've got a strong vision and mission and purpose and, and you're really looking and refocusing 
and keeping up with the times because you have may have written something two years ago and now in the situation and the predicament that we find ourselves in, it may not be relevant. Um, and look how many people and how many businesses are not relevant at the moment. I mean, um, you know, so, so you really need to retweak, redefine, and maybe just tinker a little bit with the plumbing every now and again. But I, I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, not giving up. And, and that's what I'd like to leave on today, um, is that the most successful business people and entrepreneurs have failed so many times in their lives. So, you know, you've got to embrace failure. Um, look, you can't fail too many times, and I don't think any of us have had have got the money like Warren Buffett or um, Steve Jobs or all of those great people to fail. But um, with failure comes success, and as long as when you fail, you learn from that um, that mistake. But be prepared as an entrepreneur to fail because you are going to fail. But it's how you overcome and how you learn from that and how you move forward from that um, is, is, is really important. So you must be willing and prepared to, to fail. And as I said to you, some of the greatest, greatest business people have failed. So I don't know if any of you know Adriana Huffington from Huffington Post. Um, she was fired from many jobs. She was a journalist. Um, she then decided that she was going to run um, for the governor of, um, I think it was California, yeah, the governor of California, um, before Ani, um, what's his name, Big Muscles. And um, she actually decided to stand for governor, and she got 1% of the popularity vote. Now, I mean, if that doesn't destroy you, 1% of, of, of the vote, and she, uh, she could do one thing, either she could decline and just, I mean, she could just um, go into hiding and, and, and not reappear. But she learned a lesson from that. And she looked at why she had failed. And she had failed because she hadn't used social media and she hadn't used technology to actually promote her campaign. And she realized that she was so far behind the world of digital technology that it was like critically important for her to get her head around technology and what it could have done for her campaign, that she ended up becoming the biggest online news platform in the world. So she writes blogs. Um, Huffington Post is, is, is the biggest online news platform in the world. So there's some, somebody who had failed, been fired, um, didn't make it, who is now one of the most successful um, entrepreneurs. I was very fortunate to listen to her a couple of years ago. Um, Thomas Edison um, failed school, was an absolute disaster. He was determined that he was going to make a light bulb after failing so many times. Um, he eventually invented the light bulb. Um, but there were over a thousand failures. He was kicked out of school. People called him stupid. Um, so, so I think there are just so many examples of, of people who have failed. Um, I don't know if you know the story of Walt Disney, and I'm just giving you these examples because so often we, we, we go into a decline because we failed at something, but we can't. We've got to look at it as an opportunity in disguise. So Walt, Walt Disney was on the bones of his whatever, and he, in fact, the story in his book goes that he was so poor that he was eating dog food for supper. It's a true story. He was eating dog food for supper. And he came, you know, he kept on making these cartoon characters and thought this was like going to reinvent television and entertainment. And um, he presented Mickey Mouse to MGM. And they said, are you crazy, Mickey Mouse? Like, what, who is Mickey Mouse? First of all, kids are terrified of, of a mouse. Women are petrified of, 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 of a mouse. I mean, who is going to look at this mouse with big ears and, and find it funny or entertaining? And because he was rejected by so many people, he started his own production company. And I mean, we know that the Disney story is one of the most successful stories. So never give up. Be prepared to fail. Um, and fail you will, 
but it's only through failure that, that you're going to grow. I have made so many mistakes and I love to talk about them because it reminds myself and hopefully I'm teaching somebody else. I mean, we wanted to go global. Um, we started a business in Australia. We started a business in the United States. We started a business all over and we realized that that was not our forte. You know, let's get the glo let's get the South African market sorted. Let's, let's be the best in the country and, and then actually expand. And the entrepreneurs that I'm mentoring at the moment, and I mentor a lot of entrepreneurs, and particularly now, you know, they're saying, you know, our business is, has gone. I mean, we don't have a business. Um, we're going to have to look offshore. We're going to have to go into America. We, and I say, guys, if you're not making it in South Africa, like, think about it. Rather, let's get your South African operation. Let's, let's try and remodel it. Let's try and transform it before you start thinking um, of, of, of going global. So, so never give up, um, really. And I still don't give up. I mean, I'm, I really don't give up. And if somebody tells me that I can't do something, and the one lesson, and I think um, Lisa's heard me say this, when I resigned um, from my company that I was working at to go and join Imperial to start this car rental business, I remember my boss said, um, he said two words to me. He said, Number one, he said, um, like this company has, is, has just started, a, a startup car, a car rental company in this market is never going to work. So he says, you're absolutely ridiculous. And then the second thing he said to me, and it's Women's Month, so I'm allowed to say it. He said, and Dawn, you're a female and you're joining another two females and females know nothing about the transport industry. So never give up. And I promise you that made me so determined. And we went out and... Lisa's heard my story, but 10 years later, what arrived on my desk? He see me for a job. <laughs> so that just goes to show, if you don't give up I, 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 and you keep, you keep reinventing yourself, I, I promise you, you can be successful. So that's my message. Thank you all very much. Liz, over to you. Okay, so I think we are um, over time. So I just have a little uh, last challenge for all of you. And I think this is just around what we've been saying. It's around putting your attention on something. It's around focus. It's around, you know, finding your true north. And in our book, and, and if you um, there's the story of um, Jim Carrey when he, um, he wrote a check for himself. But I have a, actually a very similar story. And I think it's very nice to, you know, relate your own stories. So about five or six years ago, I, I was in my late 40s. And um, I had uh, read the story of Jim Carrey, who wrote a check for himself. I mean, he was literally living in his car. He wrote a check for $10 million. And he got the part in Dumb and Dumber. And I thought, oh, wow, that's amazing. And I actually ended up doing the same thing. So my challenge to you is write a check for yourselves in five years time, if it's your 30th birthday or 40th birthday, or pick a day that's important to you, Christmas or whatever it is, um, and write that sort of check to yourself of a, an amount that you think that you'd like to make in the next five, five years or so pick, pick um, you know, between three and five years. I actually did this exercise. I wrote a check to myself and I, I, I um, dated it for my 50th birthday. And just before my 50th birthday, I sold 27% of my company um, for very close to the amount that I'd written on, my, on the check. So it's just something that, and I kept it in my wallet and it's just something that, you know, kept me kind of focused on what I wanted, on where I was going. And I challenge you to do the same is, you know, A, to, to write these things down, to write down your goals, to write down, you know, get this vision, get it right. Um, let's work on, help you work on that. Because once you find your true north and you stay true to that, I promise you, your success um, is far more likely to come to you than not. And just in closing, there was a, 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 it's also in the book, and I hope you've read it, but um, there was a Harvard, a, a Harvard um, paper that they did, and what they don't teach you in the Harvard Business School, about the people that wrote down their vision and their goals in their life. And they achieved 10 times more success than all the other people put together. They did this survey on this class, and the, the sort of the top 5% wrote down 
everything they wanted to achieve. And they were then interviewed years later and the people who had written down their goals and their vision um, had achieved so much more success in their lives than the ones that hadn't. So I really encourage you exactly what Dawn said, start a journal, start writing these, these, these things down. Let's you know, stay focused and stay committed to where you want to, where you want to go in your life. But um, yeah, on that note, uh, we're happy to take a few more questions if you, if you, if you want to, but we're also happy to you know, in, um, have sessions with you privately to help you get to where you want to go too. But thank you very much, everybody. Les, Dawn, thank you. Um, an incredible hour. So much information, so many insights, um, and a lot of um, knowledge and expertise for us to reflect on and, um, and really work on and give focus and attention to so that we can all um, review our visions if we have them or recreate them. Um, or actually start with a new one if we need to. So, so thank you. Um, I, uh, if there are any questions in the chat box, we're happy to take one or two. We are mindful of time and we were going to try and keep to that hour. Um, most people are just saying thank you so much for, for the session and the wonderful insights. Um, so maybe we'll communicate on email and um, connect next week, Thursday, for session two. Thank you, Lisa. Can I just maybe add one thing? So Les and I are very happy to take your emails. Um, but also, we would really like feedback because, as Les said, it's the first time we've had, we've had many webinars where we're talking to people. But this is really about um, engaging with people. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your stories. We want to hear your challenges. Maybe Lisa, that they can address it to you. If there's anything that is working or not working in this process that we've spent today in the hour, um, how can we make it better for you? How can we make it more meaningful? How can you get more out of it? Um, because as Les and I, and I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it, it's our first um, interactive um, course that we've done. So we would really like feedback on how we can actually improve, that, improve ourselves. We really would love your feedback so thank you all I think, yeah. in this mad world and do what you do best and just i wish you all the success thank you great thanks thanks dawn okay thanks if everybody anybody wants uh, to unmute or have a last question if there is, are any questions but otherwise have a fabulous day everybody um, uh, anybody you know, unmute and ask us a question or are you happy Happy, thumbs up, happy. Okay, great. But we look forward oh, to hearing a, from you. A, a beautiful, beautiful comment from one lady said, can't fault anything. Best Zoom session I've been on. <laughs> and, and even from my side, you know, we've run a lot of webinars. Um, they're very one dimensional and it is tough to create a live interactive um, experience. Um, but I think we can we can work on it and take feedback and and use the six weeks to evolve, learn, and um, try and make it a little bit more engaging and interactive. So we can just try. especially yeah. I mean, we've got eighteen separate companies here, so we really we know you've each got eighteen separate challenges, and we get that, and we really want to help you individually just to you know, overcome some of those challenges or just to help you as much as we possibly can. And sometimes it does take that individual attention and we understand that. So um, you know, that's why we are happy to meet separately. But we've got six weeks together and we can't wait and we look so forward to adding value to your lives. Great, thanks everyone, bye.